Welcome back to another video today, the LRDG raid on Bacha Airfield. So the LRDG under Eason Smith, uh, mostly New Zealanders, are heading towards Bacha Airfield and they are sort of camping for the night. Uh, not camping for the night, they are, they are wa wasting time before the actual event starts. Because remember this, normally the LRDG and the Commandos have a lot of free time. Uh, a lot of, sorry, not free time, but uh, leeway in their mission. So, on or around this day, do some nuisance over here. And then we'll pick you up on the 30th. You know, on the 15th, go and cause havoc and then we'll pick you up like a week or two later. Uh, this mission was coordinated with the Army, Navy and the Air Force. Uh, British, of course, have the RAF. The Americans won't have an Air Force until after the war. But the, the, it's the Army, Navy and the Air Force, uh, the SOE... The MI5 and 6, which sort of counts for the SOE, but they're, they're, this is coordinated with literally every single organization in the British Army is coordinating on this mission. Um, so the it has to be done by the book on time. And so they've they got there early, waiting in the, the sort of edge of a battlefield that was um, the former battlefield around Tobruk. So perfect place to hide. They've sort of snatched their vehicles as best they can, made them look destroyed. Made them look uh, look beat up, and they're sort of just you know sitting around. Uh, that night they're they're going to to move out and uh, attack, and they they see something. It's a little black dot. Ethan Smith sees a little black dot, and it comes closer and closer and closer, and then it turns into an airplane because it's an Italian air reconnaissance aircraft, and it does a big circle, and it does another big circle, and then it leaves, and Ethan Smith is going. Okay, <laughs> what the heck was that? Did it see us? Because it wasn't circling directly over us, but it sort of made a circle in this area. Maybe it just does that to try and does a circle so that, you know, the guys on the ground might freak out when they see it do that and start doing something stupid. So, we'll, we'll relax. Um, let's go over the plan for the raid on Barcher Airfield. So, well, let's do that now as well. So, Barcher is like a T. Uh, at the top of the T is the bank, the barracks, and the sort of governmental buildings uh the second group is going to attack that area that this is the crossbar the t um and then so you get the t uh this bit here the sort of middle section is where is it like the main square and at the bottom of the t is the airfield so the second group is going to attack the barracks and the the bank to one rob the bank to pay off um popsky's private army uh, popsky had actually sent two men into bacha two natives to um reconnoiter the area and neither of them have returned yet but they they weren't worried no, maybe they just run off. Um, so the second group was meant to tie up the barracks. The first group would attack the airfield. The third group would roam around Bacha, like all the little. That was the main section of Bacha. Is the T. Everything else is like a warren of little um, streets and things. They would just go through the streets, causing havoc in their jeeps. Um, they wanted to make the raid look as big as possible, so that if someone had heard about a raid, they would think that the entire thing was focused in Bacha. So if they if a German commander had somehow been tipped off, heaps of British forces are in the area, and then it's like, oh, well, a giant army has just attacked Bacha, a huge force of these commando things. Oh, okay, well, then that must be where the raid is happening instead of, you know, looking elsewhere. So that was the plan. And then a fourth group would be under um, Popsky, who would just have a jeep and a whole bunch of his natives, and their job would be to keep the road open to um, back to the way that they had to escape. And they set off on this uh, this mission and um, as they're setting off let's jump over to the other LRDG SAS for the who are going to be attacking the radio station uh, their job is to to bust through the Taruk perimeter um, where the SRG are going to sneak in these guys are literally going to um, grab the steering wheel plant their foot on the floor and then just start shooting with machine guns and just bust through the perimeter um, they're doing it in like a far like off section of the line, so bust through the perimeter, hook round hard, come straight back in, barrel through the German camp, get on the main highway that the other guys are on, uh, but after they've been through there. So, um, uh, yeah, subtlety, not really the, the the main feature of this mission. So they actually go through this, this area that's so scrubby, they actually have to get out of the trucks and dig boulders out of the sand and, and dig tree stumps out and drag the trucks up over sand dunes, so it's pretty much inaccessible to vehicles. But they get all the vehicles over there. They have five. And they... Oh, sorry. They have six vehicles. 
They get the six vehicles over there and they start driving towards a German pillbox with a little gate thing next to it with one of those stupid wooden things that you can just drive straight through like in every movie. Um, and the they just drive straight through the, the little wooden thing that is meant to stop you driving along the road because it's made of wood and you have a, tr a car, a, you know, an LRDG truck. And as they drive through it, they start throwing grenades into the pillbox and just light it up. Um, and then they speed off in all different directions and come together at the at the meeting point. And as they're coming in, uh, Commander looks, one, two, three, four, five trucks. Where is the sixth truck? And then a bunch of guys start walking in. Hey, Commander, uh, the sixth truck is way back there. Uh, it got hit like exactly as we passed because they were the last ones through and they their rear tires had been shredded by machine gun fire. The truck then stalled. They couldn't get it started again. Germans started running out of the pillbox. They abandoned the truck. Um, but the Germans hadn't found the truck yet, so... <sighs> well, we have to get that truck back because that is the radio truck with the wireless set with all the SAS LRDG codebooks in it. Um, that has to be recovered or at least destroyed, so... Out of the trucks. Get your Tommy guns. Uh, they, 12 men go off. The rest stay behind with the, with the LRDG... With the trucks there. And... Um, they go along and can't find it. They can't find the friggin' truck. They have the guys who abandoned it don't know where it is. They know it's at least inside the perimeter, so that's a, bon a small bonus. They can't find it, so the commander gets out a very pistol, which is a uh, like a flare gun, and just starts firing flares off into the air. And everyone hits the dirt except the commander, who just stands there looking around for the truck. Um, good example of again, British officers don't duck. Uh, Lindy Bates's video on this, but um, British officers, especially in World War Two. You know, up to about World War Two, British officers are still very proper. They're still very, you know, don't flinch at gunfire, don't run. Because why would you run? Who cares what the enemy... Have the enemy can't, you know, show disdain for them by just walking or, or jogging everywhere. Don't sprint and don't duck around like that because yeah, it's a good, good example. So he's just standing up, firing flares off into the air inside the Tobruk perimeter after having let loose with anti-aircraft guns and, and 50 machine guns firing at this little pillbox. The alarm has obviously been raised. He doesn't care. And they uh, they eventually come up to the pillbox and he sends a few men in there. And uh, they have kicked the front door down, lots of machine gun fire. Walk around for a little bit. More machine gun fire. Grenade, grenade. More machine gun fire. And then they both come out. The two guys that have been sending come out. It's like, there was a lot of Germans in there. We think we got them all. Yeah, we should probably get out of here though because there was a wireless set in there. So they probably called someone. Uh, they find the truck, and they find the rear wheels had just been shredded, and they needed to be changed. There was no way to get out of there without changing the tires. So, in the middle of the night, um, outside of a German pillbox, on the actual main, one of the side entrances to Tobruk, these SAS commandos lift a truck up and change the tires. They then jump in it and drive back to where the rest of the guys are. Now, the crucial part of this is they are now an hour and a half behind. So, the SIG commandos are an hour, uh, the SIG and the commandos with them are an hour and a half behind. The LRDG SAS um, raiding the radio station are also an hour and a half behind. <sighs> Not looking good for this whole Tobruk thing. So they are now going to set off to attack the radio station. But something had happened, which I didn't tell you about because I wanted to build a little bit of suspense. Just before they had gone into Tobruk, they had seen a lot of Italians. A lot of friggin' Italians driving down the main highway. And they were very worried about this. So the, uh, the commander got on the wireless and he's trying to raise everyone else. He's trying to raise the other two groups. He's trying to raise HQ. There's a, f there's a lot of Italians moving through here. I don't know what we're going to do. There's just so many Italians. I'm very concerned about this. And uh, they too had been spotted by an aircraft. Um, the, but they didn't know they'd been spotted. But they were fairly sure an aircraft had seen them. Again, came out, circled them, left. We're very sure that we've been spotted by an aircraft. And there's a lot of Italians moving into Tobruk. And I'm very, very worried about this. And they spend hours trying to get into contact with everyone else. No one answers them. No one, no one could hear them. So they've given up and then they went on the mission. Now, remember how I talked about the... We're back to Barcha now. So the Barcha guys have come through and they've smashed through two little sort of outlying perimeter defenses that weren't supposed to be there. There were two groups of Italians, mostly just conscripts and a lot of conscripted natives. And one of these conscripted natives... Um, I should say local, not native, but yeah, whatever. The conscripted Arabs fighting the Italians. One of them surrenders immediately because his tribe is very hostile to the Italians because they have been for probably 50 or 60 years, maybe up to 100 years. And he tells them that he saw something very strange. 
His company was sort of just out on a patrol when an airplane came down and threw a piece of paper out the window. What had happened was that aircraft that had circled once, circled twice, the uh, Barcher group had actually written down, we've just seen a whole bunch of SAS or some kind of, you know, we've just seen a whole bunch of these desert raiders out there in the, in the desert. They're probably coming to Barcher because that's really the only airfield they wouldn't try and attack Tobruk, obviously. So they wrote it down on a piece of paper, scrunched it up and just hucked it out the window. Um, that then was then relayed, that, that's really amazing that that actual paper actually landed on the ground. I imagine they would have done it more than once, but um, the one occasion is mentioned, I imagine they would have just thrown papers out the window at every place they came to. But uh, anyway, this guy had picked it up, read it, given it to his commander who had told the Italians about it, and the Italians basically went, oh, okay, thank you very much. Everyone on friggin' alert uh, put eight tanks on that Barsha airfield, put a whole bunch of German armored cars in the main square, uh, bring forward like half an Italian battalion and uh, put it in the barracks. Put the other half Italian battalion all around the town so we can get some warning for when they're coming in. And Eason Smith finds this out and Eason Smith is extremely concerned about what's going to happen next. And uh, you should be too because you'll find out on Monday. Thanks very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.